Well, once again, I am at the Resource Center, and today I'm going to be talking with your disability rep, and that's Roy Rickstrew. Roy, good to see you again. Likewise, Tom. What are we going to talk about this time? Because I know, you know, we, we, we've talked about, oh, the importance of communicating with your doctor. Maybe now the importance of really knowing what you're telling him as well. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, so normally we talk about how... You know, we research the laws, we're professionals in this realm, but today you're the expert. Uh -huh. And what I mean by that is you're the expert on how it is that you feel. And when you talk to the doctor, it's real important that you're prepared for that conversation. The same holds true when you talk to your Social Security judge as well in a hearing setting. Right. But you got to put some thought to these things ahead of time before you go see your doctor. Doctors will ask you a lot of times about your pain level since the last visit. They'll say between one and yeah, ten, where's they, your pain level? Exactly. Right? A horrible scale, but people I still know. use it. <laughs> um, you know, folks stub their toe and folks have kidney stones, and you know, it's, yes. it's your worst pain you've ever experienced. Exactly. Um, but nonetheless, you know, you need to have some idea of what those pain levels have looked like through the last week or the month since you've seen the doctor before. Mm -hmm. How many good days have you had versus bad days? Folks who have migraine headaches a lot of times, how often are the headaches? We kind of struggle through these things. The symptoms become the norm, and we lose track of how frequent they are. That's true. You've got that shoulder that's really, but after a while, that you're, you kind of get used to that pain. That becomes your norm then. Well, right. If you lay down three times a week for pain management because your back hurts, you lose track of how many days you actually lay down. Right. Somewhere along the way, the doctor or the judge may ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, we also tend to focus on minor ailments when we go see the doctor. You got the flu, you got the sniffle, seasonal allergies. You forget to mention that your back's still a problem. Yeah, your back or still hurts. Anytime you cough, your back feels like it's thrown out and things like that. So know? then I see things that say denied back pain. Well, back pain was your primary disability. What do you mean you denied back pain? Uh -huh. Well, we focused on the seasonal allergies. Okay, now how do you how do you keep track of this? What do you do because uh, you know I, uh, this pain was three days ago. I don't remember. Was it a seven? Was it a four? That sort of stuff. Very simple. Grab you a calendar or grab you a day planner and just keep track of it. Keep a symptom log. How often do you have headaches? How often are they bad enough you have to go lay down for symptom relief? Um, keep track of your break schedules. If you had to go sit down because your knee was bothering you, how long did you sit down? How long before you could resume the activity? Did it wipe you out for the day? Um, those things become very important. And then the last thing here is functional assessment. Do it yourself. Keep track of how long you can stand. Keep track of how far you can walk. Keep track of how long you can sit in one time before you have to get up and move around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to do you well, I would imagine, when it comes to making your claim. Well, sure. And Social Security and the, the judges expect you to be the expert on this. You should know these things. And so that's their expectation. Your symptoms should be stubborn, hard to treat, and because of that, they're top of mind. Uh -huh. They're hard to escape. Your day is focused on pain management instead of focusing on what an employer would want of you to do. Right. So you should know these things. They should be big flashing lights. A lot of times when I get in these hearings, folks are asked how long can they sit, and we get a blank stare. They don't know, and it hurts your credibility. If you don't know how pervasive your disability is, mm -hmm. th how do we? Well, I mean, that, that makes me think, can you have notes? Is it a good idea to keep the notes oh, yeah. with you with answering, you know, the questions uh, of your doctor, of, of the judge, whatever it might be, just to be able to say, yes, my back hurts. It's here's, and then you can refer to here's how many times, here's what it does to me. That's right. One of the things I do with my clients, we talk about their conditions, we sit down, we make together a checklist, and then you take that checklist with you to the doctor and you make sure you address each of those things when you go. Uh -huh. That way we see this repetition of symptoms, it looks stubborn and hard to treat, and we've got good, valid information as to how much of your time you lose to this condition. And you're consistent with it that way as well. Very much so, very much so. Always best, all, you know, as yourself, it's always best to have an expert to talk to as well. Yes, indeed, but it's like writing a book report and you're writing the book, so mm -hmm. you gotta make sure you keep these things so they can later be found by Social Security when they review your records. If people would like to talk to you, you know, get more information about what you can offer them, how do they do that? Well, you can give me a call, 417-882-1800. Click on the QR code that appears on your screen. You can go to urdisabilityrep.com for more videos and information, or you can stop by. I'm out here on South National off of Kingsley, near the old Zio's restaurant, right across the street, actually. Have time for walk-ins, we'd love to see you. All right, and all you have to do is ask for Roy. 
He's right here. Always good to see you. Likewise, Tom. Take care. Again, great advice from Dollars and Cents.